Hi, and welcome back to BuyEveryWord.org. Uh, my name is Nathan Bland, and I'm so glad you got to come back to the site. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about today. I'm starting a new series. Of, well, it's still the Kingdom Study Series. I'm, I'm always going to be teaching on the Kingdom. I am just, I am so moved by the Kingdom and the, because it was the message that Jesus preached. So I just get excited thinking about the Kingdom and living in the Kingdom. I'm not. I'm not having to think about what will be one day or leaving here and what, I, what I'll what i inherit one day. I live in it now. I enjoy God now. I enjoy His kingdom now. I enjoy His benefits now. And I enjoy studying about it and hearing God's word and just letting His law just come alive in my life. And so I get really excited about teaching about this. And I hope that you've been getting something from these messages. Um, I've been away for a few weeks. I haven't been able to shoot any videos, but I hope you've um, I hope you've enjoyed all of the writings that I've been putting up. I've uh, I've been getting a lot of comments back and feedback from those, and I'm just really excited to all the new people that I'm getting to meet and get to talk to, and uh, it's just a blessing to hear from other followers of God, and uh, it's been just so wonderful to see so many people. Uh, God working in their life and the kingdom manifesting in their life. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we're uh, going to start a new chapter of uh, our kingdom study series. Um, we've done six videos so far, and those six videos were on kingdom awakening. If you look at the site at buyeveryword.org, you'll, you'll notice that uh, falls under kingdom awakening. And, and it's a framework for everything that we talk about when it comes to God's Word and how it relates to His message about a kingdom. That's what His message was all about. It, it's uh, This is not a... Uh, something that is put together to get you excited for a little bit. You know, uh, some ministers will talk about faith and they'll get you really excited about faith for a little while. And you just go around and you know, all you think is faith, faith, faith. And, and then some messages, uh, preachers get you excited about healing for a while. And all you can think is, oh, healing, healing, healing. You're so excited about healing. But then after a while it wears off and you, you need something else and, and then you run into someone else, uh, another preacher that gives you uh, maybe a message about tithing and giving and you just get excited and you're like, yeah, I'm going to plant seeds and you get excited about that. But the whole time you wind up focusing on these, these areas as if they're separate things and you don't tie them all in together. And so you wind up not getting to the root of what all of those things are, uh, surround, the, 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 the very root of all of these things. And it's the message that Jesus Christ preached and it's the message of the kingdom. Read the Bible. Look at the four Gospels. Study them. And if you read all four Gospels and you still don't get it, read it again. And if you still don't get it, read them again. Continue to read those, those four Gospels because I promise you, the more you look at those, you're going to see a repeating message, a repeating area that Jesus constantly stayed on. It's a, it was his area of focus, and it was kingdom, kingdom, kingdom kingdom. That's all he talked about was kingdom. And there's a reason for it. There's a reason why we give and why we tithe. We're part of a kingdom. There's a reason why we have faith. It's It all ties into kingdom and his laws, having faith in his laws and in him. There's a reason why we do all the things that we do in the Bible, and they all come down to kingdom. And we're going to go through all of those topics eventually, but it was important that we get that framework down. So if you haven't seen the other six messages, I, I just ask you to look, look up those messages uh, at buyeveryword.org. And under Kingdom, you'll notice Kingdom Awakening. And uh, the messages will be right there for you. But we're going to be starting on a, a section on prayer. I've, uh, I've been putting a, a lot of stuff together and studying prayer. And I know there's many people out there who have gotten into the same place that I have gotten into before. You you talk about prayer. You hear other people talk about prayer. You request, request prayer at your church or from other people. Have you ever said this? Have you ever, you're around friends or uh, people of faith or family, and you're getting ready to, you're getting ready to leave each other. 
and you say, hey, you know, keep us in your prayers. Hey, y'all pray for us. Or, you know, hey, do me a favor, pray for us whenever y'all don't forget about us. And then you say, yeah, yeah, we, we will. And then you leave and you never pray for them. You never bring it up. You never think about it. We, it has become such a common thing. It's like saying bye or saying, you know, we'll see you later. Do you know if you'll see him later or not? <laughs> we say that sometimes. I have, I know, I know that there are times that I have seen somebody and I may never see that person again. And, I, I, and it's just a common thing of, hey, we'll see you later. And I don't know if I'm going to see you later. It becomes a common phrase that we say. We have a lot of those. Sometimes we'll say, there's just all kinds of phrases that we say sometimes. And they're more of just uh, cliches. We just, it's a common thing we say. And we don't really mean something specific by it. But it's so dangerous for us to get into that habit of saying, hey, you know, we're gonna, we'll pray for you. Or somebody asks us, hey, will you pray for me? Yeah, I'll keep you in my prayers. And then we never do it. We forget about them. I don't want to do that. I don't want to fall into that place where that's a common practice for me. And so it is important that we understand the purpose of prayer and why we pray. There's a, there's a reason why prayer was invented. It was a reason why God asked us to pray. There's a reason to it. And it's, we, have to, we have to understand why it is God wants us to pray. Why? Because if we don't understand why God wants us to pray, the reason for prayer, then it will become something that we find is useless. We do when we remember. We will say a prayer when we eat. Or we'll say a prayer when we go to sleep at night. Or something to open up a meeting with. Or something to just say while we're in the car. We have to get past all of that. We've got to find the reason why we do things. If you don't understand the reason why you do something, then you do it in vain. And it doesn't become important to you. There's no logic behind why you do something. When we get up every morning, we have something that we do, at least I hope most of you do. We, we go to a sink and we have these little brushes that are in our, in, in our uh, bathrooms and we put toothpaste on there, right? And, and you begin to brush over the, your teeth. You brush the sides, the front, uh, the, the backs, you brush, you brush all of that part. Why do you do that? You know exactly why you do that. You're thinking of it right now. You're thinking of all the things that, that you're preventing by brushing your teeth. You're keeping plaque away. You're keeping tartar away. You're keeping your teeth strong. You want them to be wide and you want them to look good because you have to use those teeth. When you smile, people are going to see you, and you want you want to present the best set of teeth that you can. And you know, we go to great lengths to have great teeth. You know, some people get braces because they want their teeth to to look straight. And uh, you know, we we have so many things that we do in order to take care of them. And we do it for a reason. We don't just say, well, I just, I don't know, I just do it. We don't do that. There's a reason why we do it. There's a reason why we brush them, you know, twice or three times a day. There's a reason why we floss. There's a reason to it. If I ask you, why do you floss? You're going to have a reason. Why do you fix your hair if you fix your hair? You know, there's a reason why you fix it. There's a reason why you take a bath. There's a reason why you take Tylenol. You don't just take it because, well, I just like to swallow these little pills. There is a reason. You've got a headache that you want to get rid of. You've got a, a sickness that you're trying to overcome. You've got something that you're trying to, uh, some area of your life you want to make feel better. You know, there's a reason why you want to keep your cholesterol down. There's a reason why we do things. So why do you pray?